Good morning, everyone. Very nice to be here and uh, being the first guy out uh, talking about Abakeo, a favorite subject of mine. Uh, I hope everyone had the morning coffee, and but you don't really need it. This is exciting stuff, so I hope I keep you awake. Um, so what are, what's Abakeo? Abakeo is a great company uh, starting from Malmö CRC, focusing initially on uh, diabetes. And what we actually do is that we restore uh, beta cells by restoring mitochondrial health. So this discovery is uh, simply that uh, beta cells that were thought to be dead can be revived or restore function. That's exciting, right? Um, so, company Snapshot. We were founded in uh, 2017, and um, we have since been developing and evolving our own uh, small molecules. We have um, a highly experienced team. We have uh, fantastic scientists, uh, among them uh, Professor Klaus Volheim, who uh, is a professor both in Malmö and in Geneva since many, many years, a household name in the diabetes community. Um, we have received some really nice seed funding, both from uh, Almi uh, family offices and from um, uh, VC here in uh, Sweden called Stoaf. We are, have, um, there's a proof of concept for this application, not only in um, uh, diabetes, but also in uh, heart failure and Alzheimer's disease. So uh, there is a very, very strong scientific concept around what we are doing. In terms of value creation, we have recently managed to uh, sign good deals with both Eli Lilly and with Biogen, where we are working very closely with them. So, what do we actually do? How do we, where's the magic in this science? Um, I don't know, but do you know what true power is? It's not fast cars, it's not big houses, it's not a luxurious lifestyle. True power comes from mitochondria. Mitochondria is the powerhouse of each cell. And that's what's, what we have a function in. Because there is a situation where uh, there is a small ion channel that's supposed to regulate the sort of fuel, the ATP, coming into mitochondria and then sending out ADP that becomes dysfunctional under certain some circumstances. And as, I don't know, is there a pointer? No. Um, no laser pointer? No. Um, so VDAC1 is the ion channel that regulates this transfer. And under certain cir circumstances, it moves from the mitochondria to the outer cell membrane. And there it oligomerizes and sort of clumps up, becomes a big pore, and then you have no sorry, regulation. And uh, that means that the cell will shut down. It's like overflowing in an engine. I don't know if you ever used a, a, a lawn mower. Uh, if you have too much fuel coming in or uh, not coming out, then it, the motor, motor is just going to stop. The same thing here, more or less. Um, and therefore, it missed targets. And the whole thing shuts down. Um, and what we could say here is that we plug that hole, just to make it very simple. We plug the hole, and then we have shown that we restore the function in uh, these beta cells. And I'll get back to some of our data. But what's truly exciting is that a lot of the diseases related to type 2 diabetes or diabetes in general have the same issues with cells. So we have been able to show in, in, uh, well, in the scientific community, but also from ourselves, that this doesn't stop here. You go to dementia, you go to cardiovascular disease, and there are similar patterns with cells. Uh, so we are expanding our collaborations in those directions. Well, market size. I, we all know that if you go into biotech, there, but there's no lack of potential here, not among any of your companies around here. But uh, I think if you address 
Alzheimer's, if you address type 2 diabetes, those are the two of the really big ones. Um, and that will take collaborations. And yeah, I mean, diabetes is growing. We know that. It's, it's a sad fact. So, in order to show what we're actually doing, is we have been able to reverse first of two major mechanisms of glucose dysregulation. We have identified superior lead molecules that we are working with, evolving. Uh, we have actually, we are now working with two modalities, so both with antibodies and the small molecules, identifying compounds that through our proprietary uh, screening process. And uh, let's say it looks exciting. Um, there are some unpublished human islet data showing that we have uh, function also in type 1 diabetes. So we're not leaving the, uh, the type 1s behind. And what we have shown is in two different models. I think the one that got me hooked, I started out as chairman of the board uh, 2020 in this company. And what got me really hooked was that the scientists of this team were able to show restored insulin secretion uh, from donated uh, islets from type 2 diabetics. So human islets, um, we got them, we exposed them to glucose, and um, nothing happened, or very little happened anyway. We um, added our prototype substance, and then exposed them to glucose again. And, well, presto, uh, they started producing insulin. So that's one of the, the, that's really the magic. I mean, it's a Lazarus project in that sense. Uh, cells that do not function start functioning. The second part is uh, the fasting glucose, where we have also been able to show that we have a so-called legacy effect. So in normally in type 2 diabetes, most medications you take them, you have an effect for a quite short time, and then the effect is gone. We have been able to show in a DBD mouse model, so the standard model, that we have a continued effect for up to two weeks after um, medication in these animals, which um, I'm not pointing any fingers, but we do know that uh, type 2 diabetics are not the most compliant group of patients. And uh, this would be possibly make it uh, a better development for these patients over time. So, two very exciting effects. Um, and I think this is even more exciting. Yeah. Um, we have been able to set up two collaborations. Uh, very good collaborations with Eli Lilly and with Biogen, as mentioned. And of course, we are chasing some others as well. We are not there just yet, um, but we'll follow on. Uh, we have a good team. You see me twice. They just, it's not the coffee or any drinks or anything. It's just the way it is for the moment. Um, unfortunately, our uh, former CEO had to leave, but um, I am here in, in uh, both places for the moment, and we're recruiting a new chairman, if anybody is interested. <laughs> uh, I'm taking on a full-time CEO uh, position right now. Um, I want to talk a little bit about Klaus Wolheim, um, our main professor here. Uh, like I mentioned before, he's been, well, he is, uh, professor at Lund CRC, um, he, uh, Lund Malmö CRC, and uh, in Geneva. Uh, he is an, I just want to really talk a little bit about him because he's such an amazing guy. He's been blind for the last 30 years, but he's the one who proofreads everything through a camera that reads everything to him, and then he, he uh, finds the errors. Um, he uh, can quote papers back from the 60s, straight out, uh, an amazing brain. One of those that will leave a legacy behind him. William um, is our chemist, great guy, he's been in the industry for a long time. 
Uh, well, and then board of directors. Actually, we are missing one gentleman here. The, the, uh, this part was not updated, so I'm the chairman still. Helen Pettersson uh, from Almi has been working with us. Excellent person. Uli Koch come from uh, Bayer and um, has a long, long, long experience working with um, this kind of development companies. And um, uh, sorry for big pharma, but also now working with developing companies. And we have managed to to recruit a great scientific advisory board. Um, as you may see and, I mean, deduct from what I've been talking about is, uh, there's a popular word these days called longevity. It's not my favorite version of things, but uh, because it's not an indication to get older. Uh, but um, we are touching very much on longevity and prolonging um, parts of life. and and mostly actually promoting a healthy years, adding healthy years to life. And that was actually my final slide. And that leaves us three minutes and 47 seconds for questions. Thank you so much. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, Adam for uh, making that in a great time. Please Thank join you. me here. It will look so nice on yeah. the camera and for the audience. We have some questions for you already. Thank, Thank you, you for submitting them. Okay, the first one. Could your treatment be applied to other mitochondrial diseases in addition to type two diabetes? Absolutely. I, I mean, there's a connection between VDAC1 and uh, several other diseases, cardiovascular disease, inflammatory conditions, and there's also, of course, potential in Alzheimer's and so on. Mm. So, yes. Great. What is the biggest challenge for you to reach your target for this year? I think we are all running for money, right? So that's why we're here. So that's that. I would say that's the main um, focus right now for the moment. Um, we are raising, um, well, right now we are raising about 3 million euros. And uh, we are also raising another 10 million euros next step to take us th to all the way essentially to, um, um, to well, es essentially to have a ready compound going into the clinic. Okay, Those thank you. Those are the ones, yeah. Wonderful. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you for joining us, Adam Bruse, everyone. Thank you very much.